today we're going to start a little palette project. Palette projects are very popular these days. I'm sure you've seen stuff all over the internet, ideas. A lot of people have uh, seen the uh, palette couches, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to do those uh, for patio furniture and so forth. Very, very simple, very easy to do, very inexpensive for what you get out of it. Um, you can get palette wood free from anywhere. Just, you know, drive around and look for stores or businesses or anything that gets, especially if they get um, heavy bulk items then they're going to have really strong pallet wood. But uh, a lot of people are using pallet wood just as a, a resource that's easy to get, it's cheap, well it's free for the most part, uh, and you can build a lot of stuff with it. So today we're going to start on this little pallet project, see how it turns out, see if you like it, and in the future we're going to be doing a couple more of those too for our Depression Living series. Alright, as you can see, I've already set up the, uh, the pallets, and I didn't really show this part because it's really simple. You really don't need a visual for it. All you're really doing is you're stacking. You can either do them two or three thick, depending on how many pallets you have, how big you want it, you know, how, how you want to do this. I did two thick because it's actually covering quite a large area. Um, and it, so in the end, I ended up using, like, I don't know, something like 13 pallets. But uh, I have two thick, and I have it in an L shape. And then for the back I just cut a pallet in half and screwed it directly in. Because I'm against walls, um, it really doesn't have to be that structurally sound. I just screwed it in. Um, because if anybody leans back too hard or whatever, it's leaning on the wall. It's not taking a lot of pressure. I just don't want it to fall forward. So it's really just screwed in. But if this was freestanding, I would go ahead and put some metal L brackets on it as well. So you may want to do that if you have it just freestanding somewhere on a patio. Um, but basically right now that's all I have. I've cut everything to size so that it would fit perfectly in my space. Cut my top pallets in half. Screwed everything together. And that's where we are now. Next I'm going to show you how to make the cushions. Alright, I have the pallets built outside. The couches, the framework and everything is built. So now the next step is to get our cushions on. Um, and there's a couple of different options you could you could do with this. If you didn't want to have to sew or do any upholstering, you can buy these cushions already made. Any lawn and garden center has these little outside cushions. Um, they're kind of expensive. They're pretty much the basic price runs for about a 20 by 20 inch square. It be about $25. So if you're covering a large area like I am, that can add up and kind of take away from the whole purpose of this project being very easy and inexpensive. But if you wanted to do it that way just for ease sake, you can. Now, to save money and to make it more personalized and just say that you did this whole thing yourself, you can make your cushions uh, yourself and it, it will cost you a lot less. A um, couple of different options you can do for getting your cushions. You can use uh, baby bed mattresses, you know, some inexpensive baby crib mattresses. I think they run about $30 for some of the less expensive ones. Um, or you can do what I did, you can use these foam uh, mattress toppers. Uh, you can go to the store and get these little memory foam mattress toppers, but you can get them even cheaper if you go online and get them direct from a foam factory, which is what I did. I went online to you know, just search foam factory, and uh, you can get these foams straight from the factory for a lot less cost. Now you can get them custom cut to whatever size and length you want, but again, that increases the price. Well, it worked out for me that the sizes that I need would match up with uh, an extra large twin. So in your twin size bed, you basically have two options. You have your standard size twin, and then you have what's called an XL twin, which is the same width, but it's a little bit longer. So that's what I got. I got some foams that were, you know, bulk foams already cut for those extra long twin size mattresses. If you're using pallets, the width of a twin size mattress will perfectly fit the width of your your um, your pallet top. So uh, you could even use twin size mattresses if you've got some old ones somewhere you know lying around. That would work fine too. Another great thing that I find about using the mattress toppers or mattresses is that it's easy to waterproof it because it's going to be outside and because this if I'm using this really huge piece I can't throw it in the washing machine I'm going to want to be able to waterproof this to make it last longer and keep mold and nasty stuff from growing in it. Um, now you could wrap this thing in uh, any form of plastic you know and seal it up with duct tape that would really work just as well for waterproofing but because I'm using the uh, twin size mattress toppers 
Uh, for me, it's just as easy and as cheap to go ahead and get the vinyl uh, mattress covers, mattress protectors. And this will completely encase it and zip up. This is, you know, for children that, you know, wet the bed. So it's made to be waterproof. So this, I'll just slip it on and this costs about five bucks. Slips it on, zip it up, whole thing is completely waterproofed, easy as can be. And then I'll make my, um, my upholstery on top of it with a zipper that I can take that, take that whole thing off and wash it when I want to wash it. Um, for my back cushions, I'm going to do a bunch of throws, and they'll be small enough to throw in the washing machine and wash and dry it, you know, anytime that I want. So it's not going to be as critical to go through, you know, as much detailed waterproofing with those because they can be washed regularly. But with this long piece, it really can't be washed that much. Um, these are over 80 inches long, you know, so it's, it's a huge piece, and the whole thing costs about 30 bucks. So as opposed to 25 bucks for a 20 by 20, you've got like a 40 something by 80 something, uh, probably close to 90 for 30 bucks. So it's a much more cost effective uh, strategy for making your cushions. And you can get them however thick you want or you can put multiples if you want them thicker. So like I said, this is, this is about the best option that I've found as far as buying the materials to make your cushions that you'll get a good product at a very good price and you'll be able to customize it and make it exactly how you want it to theme in you know your whole patio or wherever you're doing this. Alright now since this is the way that I'm going to do it I'm going to show you how to do this, how to upholster this. It's not difficult at all. The first thing I'm going to do is take these cushions and I'm going to get them into this uh, vinyl cover, zip it up and remember that because this is made for a full mattress, um, they're going to usually be between 9 and 12 inches thick. Sometimes you can find them about 6 inches, um, but you're not going to get them any smaller than 6 inches. So unless you're using a real mattress or you're going to have a lot of foam, uh, which you can do, you can still use this, but just on the back side, kind of fold it over a little bit, tape it down with some duct tape, and that's just to keep it from bunching up whenever you put your material on it. So that's what I'm going to do right now, and I'll get right back to you. All right, now, we have our material chosen that we're going to use, and I would recommend that you use something pretty durable, because this is going to be outside, especially if you have Kit Kats. Um, I've got my cover on, so it's going to be waterproof now. Um, once you've got your material picked, the way you're going to want to do this, you're going to need to measure it from halfway down because I want my seams to be in the middle all the way around, of course. So you're going to want to measure from halfway down all the way across and then halfway down on the other side. And whatever the total measurement is that you get, you want to add an inch because you're going to add a half inch on each side for your seam. So the half inch on each side is going to equate to one more inch. So um, whatever your measurement is all the way across, go ahead and add one more inch to it. Luckily for me, because um, I've already done one of these, so I know this is the second one that I'm doing. Um, it worked out to where the factory cut is actually pretty darn close. I've, it's enough for me to not have to, to cut. I can take up the difference in the seam. So I actually don't have to cut it this way, but I do have to cut it long ways, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Your total measurement long ways from the middle to the middle on the back, um, and by middle I mean halfway the thickness of the, uh, the fabric, I mean of the uh, foam. Um, that total measurement plus a half inch on each side, which is going to give you a whole inch. So, for example, if you were doing a 20 by 20 cushion, what you would want to do is measure it from, say if your cushion was 20 by 20 and it was 4 inches thick, then it would be 2 inches on one side, your 20 across, 2 inches on the other side, which would be 24, and you would add a half inch on each side. So that would give you 25. You'd cut that, and that will give you enough to go all the way around and still have a little extra to sew in your seams. Alright, as I mentioned before, I want to have zippers on one side of this uh, mattress cover, uh, this upholstery top that I'm going to do, just to make it easy to get it on and off and be able to wash it whenever I want. Now I've got the, um, the vinyl uh, protector over the, the foam, so the foam will stay dry, but the outside material will still get wet. So I want to be able to wash that every once in a while. So I'm going to make this where I can remove it very easily. So for that, I'm going to put in zippers. You don't have to do this part, because um, putting in a zipper can be a little bit tricky if you've never done it, but it's really not that difficult. I'm going to show you how to do it. You'll be able to do it, no problem. 
but uh, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. You could just sew the whole thing in, uh, but the zipper will greatly prolong the life of your cushion. And since this is really the only part of the project that actually actually cost anything um, substantial, then you know I would want to make it last a little longer. You know your zippers might cost you less than two dollars and take you ten minutes to put in. So to me, it's worth the time and investment to prolong the life of the uh, the, mat, the cushions on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it. It's not very difficult. It's a little confusing if you've never done it before because um, you're going to be doing things backwards from what your mind might tell you you should be, be doing it. But it's very, it's not that bad. If you're like me and you can't find one that's long enough to go all the way across, you can do what I'm doing and I just got two zippers and I'm going to have them meet in the middle so they'll unzip like this. So I'll have two uh, 24 inch zippers that will meet in the middle because I couldn't find any any longer than that and this works just as well um, now do as I do and not as I say do this at a table we're using a sewing machine that has a foot pedal don't do like me and use your knee and your leg and everything else to work the foot pedal that's a good way to sew up your finger um, I'm very familiar with sewing I used to be a professional seamstress and the machines that I used were so much quicker than these little, little home machines like these things move at a snail pace compared to what I'm used to working at so yeah, I can work with them pretty safely, but I still shouldn't do it. But I'm going to do it anyway. But you don't do it because you're going to sew up your finger. Get it a table and work it properly. But it's not very difficult. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to start at my top edge, which is my short corner. Okay, tack it down, got it started. And then from here, I'm just going to close in the entire side. try to show you this <clears throat> okay now I have my side seams closed up all the way around um, except for the top where I'm gonna put my zipper I'm gonna try to show you this as as closely as possible because this is the only part that's a little bit confusing and if you mess up it's not a big deal just go back and you know pop the threads and try again all right there's two sides to your zipper Unzip it a little bit and then you'll be able to see it better. All right, there's the side that the back side of the zipper on is on, and then there's the side with the little handle, that's your front. It's gonna go in what would seemingly be kind of backwards. You wanna put it on the front side of your material, and you wanna put the front side of the zipper, the part with the little handle, down so that they're facing each other. Okay? You've got the top of the zipper flat up against the good side of the material right now I'm gonna just start to kinda tack this down a little bit right here on the edge okay I'm gonna take it pull it back wherever you want it to stop check your material if you need to, you can stretch one or the other a little more to make sure that everything lines up properly. Alright, coming back up the other side, you've got it the same way. You're putting the good side of the material and the zipper right on top of it with the zipper function part facing down and the flap the sewing flap facing up so we're going to be sewing these two flaps straight up and the reason for that is once it's done you're going to flip it and it's going to give you that seamless look and I'll show you after we do it and I'll show you how to top stitch it but just go ahead and continue to tack it on all right now that both of the zippers are put in I'm going to turn the whole thing right side out and show you. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to top stitch. Uh, top stitching the zipper is uh, basically just uh, finishing work. It's going to trim it up and make it look really nice. Uh, top stitching to sewing is what finishing work or molding is to carpentry. It's just going to make the edges look really nice and trim and neat. So when you get it all turned over like this, all we're going to do is take it, I'll zip it up to kind of show you. 
see how it's. Let me get that one sec. <clears throat> see, when you put it on like this, straight down, when you zip it, it's going to flip it like, like this so that you have this nice clean seam now. One more step, when we finish the top stitch, it'll trim it up real nice and I'll show you how to do that. Alright, for the top stitch, just take this piece, fold it just like you would if you were going to uh, zip it up, and, and roll your finger to pull that material up, just right up flush with the top of that zipper. Okay. Now once it's flush, go ahead and put it under your presser foot, tack it down, pull it back, and pinch it. When you've got it, the machine holding it like this, you can take your finger and kind of just smooth it out. And you can see when it's pretty much flush right over that zipper. And then feed it through. top stitch you want to try to keep your stitches a uniform distance as much as possible because this stitch will be visible. You could do the same thing with the cushions and just upholster the back, um, but I want to do some throws because what I want to do is kind of alternate and mix in some blue throws in with these black and whites. And uh, so what you're going to do is decide the, the dimensions that you want. Um, I'm going to get it just tall enough to cover the backboard, and mine are going to actually be slightly rectangular simply because I could utilize more fabric that way because of the length of my fabric. If I made them perfectly square, I would be throwing away uh, quite a bit of my fabric. So I can use the entire bit of fabric if I make it just a little bit longer, but um, mixed to the right to the right height. So I've got some cut right here. One side is going to already be connected because of the way that I'm doing the fabric. If you have it cut out completely, just go ahead and turn your pieces inside out. You want to close up all the sides, leaving one opening, uh, I guess about four inches wide. Okay, now, out of that hole that you left available, you want to stick your hand in there, go to the opposite corner, grab it, pull it out. So you're going to be turning it right side out. Push all your corners out. There you go. Looks good. So you've got your your pillow casing. Now we need to stuff it. All right. This stuff, of course, as soon as the air hits it, starts to. Band. Now, you could, if you wanted to waterproof these, you could um, insulate the inside in trash bag, duct tape, plastic, anything like that. Um, these are small enough for me to throw in the washing machine, so I'm not really going to worry about it. I'm just going to wash them every, you know, every week or every other week or so. So it's really not a, a big deal as far as weatherproofing. I'm just going to go ahead and make regular pillows. Great thing about the pallet couches is because of the design, uh, the air gets around it really well. So when something does get wet, you know, it dries, you know, pretty good. Just about as good as if you had put it out on the clothesline. Because there's got good ventilation all the way, all the way around. So it's not a big deal. Okay, in that hole, you just go ahead and stuff however much of this poly stuffing you want to put. You can 
I have a huge mess here because Cookie decided that it was just the greatest thing in the world to be able to explore and dig through this stuff. But you're going to take what you've got, what you think is enough stuffing in there, take that hole, turn the inside of it down with your finger and the other side so that you have uh, those seams kind of turned inwards and then pinch it and then run a stitch across that edge as close to the edge as you can. Here we have it more or less finished. I'm um, going to probably do a little bit more trim work. I'll take some pictures and put it up at the end. Uh, and I will do a separate video to show you how I made this little table also out of pallets. A very easy, simple project. Uh, this whole project I did by myself in two evenings. So, I mean, it would be an easy, quick uh, weekend project. Or, you know, just a, it really doesn't take that much work. It's very easy. Whole thing together probably cost me less than $150. And I have massive couch area uh, and with the memory foam as the cushions it's like really comfortable I could sleep on this easily in fact these mattresses are probably gonna get thrown in the bed of the pickup for the next camping trip because they are really comfortable so uh, I really like the uh, black and white base theme I'm gonna add some more throw pillows to this uh, kind of spread throughout and you could really kind of theme your patio or your furniture throughout the year. You know, I could put some red throw pillows and some red flowers in during autumn. I can put uh, green ones in the spring. I can put yellow ones in the summer or blue ones in the winter. You know, and just kind of spread them out throughout the black and white and it'll look really good and it'll just change the whole look of the whole thing. Um, the wood, you can paint it solid colors, paint it white, paint it black, whatever you want. Some people will even run rope lights underneath them to let that light shine through, uh, ambient light from underneath. You can stain it or you can just let it stay with the regular wood, whatever you want. It will look great. It's an easy, very inexpensive project that anybody can do. And I hope this helped you learn how to do it.